Okay. So here we have the, the FLIR and FOTRIC side by side. You can see that even though the FOTRIC has got a five inch screen versus FLIR's four inch screen, the actual usable thermal image is pretty, pretty similar. Um, FOTRIC does have a neat trick with the, the letterboxing on the sides. You can see a bunch of additional parameters. Um, like you can see the the max temperature up there on the left and the, the range. A lot of the same things you can see on the FLIR, but just a little more detail. See if down here in the right hand corner I've got the emissivity and the ambient temperature and the and the distance parameters all displayed prominently. Time and date stamp, the camera temperature range. And obviously we got the, the color palletization on the on the right there. Let me just get something a little more colorful up here. You can see if I hit the center button, they both pull up a little little tray. And that's pretty uncanny how similar they are. See, I had it in an above alarm color palette, which is not as not as useful. Rainbow. Just focusing these up. So you get a good image. And you see I pull secondary trigger here. This trigger will take a, a snapshot, but this trigger does the, the autofocus. Now, this uses a, a laser to get the, the distance and the focus there. And I can, I can hold it down and it will continuously autofocus. Or I can press it once and it'll zero in. I'm doing the same thing here on the faux trick, same, same dual trigger. But you may notice that the faux trick is a few seconds faster. You can do different measurement features. I just changed it to show that the hottest in the, in the scene there. On the faux trick, you can you can you can move points. Do the same on the FLIR. They both have a touch screen. Very very responsive. But a couple more things on the faux trick in terms of measurement. Now, to show you this image mode thing, the MSX that I was talking about. Here's FLIR's MSX, which is really useful when you're dealing with just small gradients in temperature. Um, relatively uniform surfaces thermally, um, just to give you a sense of what's going on optically when you're writing a report later. See how FLIRS is just a little, a little less squishy, a little smarter. So you get that ghosting effect when you do the, the fusion blending, because there's some they need to do a parallax realignment in the software. And sometimes it's really good and sometimes it's off. You can also adjust how intense you want the blending to be. Whether you want mostly thermal, mostly optical. It helps the alignment if you do a, a, an autofocus. I, I forgot to mention, 
you don't need to rely on the autofocus. It's just neater in some cases. You can also manually adjust either of these cameras using the, the focusing ring. I just tend not to do that nearly as often. Get out of this uh, this mode. Obviously, there's picture in picture. Photo trick: you can move around the picture in picture. You can change the size and shape of it. It's just a very nice, well thought out menu design, and. If you're familiar with the FLIR, you're not going to have any problem utilizing the Fotrick. In fact, you may like the Fotrick a little bit better in some cases because of how, how quickly it autofocuses, the additional measurement parameters, and it's just, it's just really nice.